Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at how to bind your client machines to your server. Now in a previous screencast we talked about how to set up your open directory which is necessary for us to actually bind a machine to your server because what we're doing is actually binding it to the open directory or to your the directory part of your server. So you're going to need to make sure you have that set up. And also we covered in our last screencast how to set up users and groups so that you can set up network accounts. So you're going to want to make sure you have looked at those two screencasts before you do this one. So you'll want to go back and make sure you've covered those. Now, why would we bind our, our client machines to the server? Well, one of the reasons we do that is so that you can have access to those network accounts to be able to log into your machines. So if you have home folders that you're going to put on the server, for instance, uh, and you want to be able to log in with those network accounts, uh, then your network accounts will be available and you can use those to log into your machine. So uh, that's why we do that, so that, that way that machine has your network accounts available. And so I just wanted to let you know that. So here we are in System Preferences. I'm remoted into a uh, laptop that I've got, so I can show you how this works. Uh, what you're going to want to do is go down to Users and Groups, and you're going to want to go to Login Options right here and click on this. It may ask you to unlock um, your, direct, your um, Users and Groups area so that you can make these kind of changes, but you want to make sure that you do that. And right here we see where it says we have a Network Account Server. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to click on Join. And what that's going to do is bring down this window that's going to give us a drop down to show us our server right here. Now, for some of you, uh, if you don't see your server right there, uh, you don't see the um, fully qualified domain name that you've got there, it may mean that, uh, that the server is not connected or you're not on the same network. So you just want to make sure that you're on the same network so that that shows up. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on this and it's going to find it. You can see the spinning ball here is looking for it and it says okay you've got that there. You've got an open directory server here and if for some reason you don't have the drop down you can actually type in the name here as well uh, and give that a shot. So I'm going to just go ahead and say okay because that's the one I want to bind to. And then it's going to say hey the server provides a certificate. Do you want to trust the certificate or not? And so what it does is it just makes sure that um, you're giving access to the certificate because once you trust that then, that, then that user will have access to your machine. And so this is a security feature just to make sure that you're not just uh, connecting to any old server that you don't know where it's coming from, and then they can now play with the directory that you've got on your machine. In fact, if I wanted to, I can show the certificate, and it'll drop down here, and show me the certificate that's attached to my server so that I know uh, all, of these, uh, all of these system things are set up. And so again, it says it was signed. It's, a, it's my normal trust certificate for my particular deal. And I can even check this box that says always trust it uh, when connecting to the server if I wanted to do that. And you can see here, I can say you want to use the certificate, always trust, never trust, or use the system default. It's really up to you. You could probably put always trust if you wanted to. I'm just going to put trust for right now so that that goes up. And so now what it's going to do is gather the server information and what it, what it comes up with is a screen where I can do what's called an authenticated bind. So I can uh, actually put in the username and password uh, that I need to bind uh, to this server, uh, or I can just bind anonymously by just saying OK. Now, for some of you, if you didn't get this screen, if it just went all the way through to where you got to the place where uh, all of a sudden you were bound and you didn't get this opportunity to put this username and password in, uh, that's okay. Uh, everything didn't, didn't fall apart. Nothing went wrong. It wasn't like uh, the machine, it didn't work. You're bound to the server. Um, but if you wanted to have uh, this binding happen, um, then you can go into the terminal to force that to happen. And so what I'm going to do is let me, uh, let me pull up a terminal prompt window here and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here I am uh, server side and I have this uh, uh, terminal window pulled up. And this is what you're going to want to put in here to require um, binding that uh, requires the password. So it's sudo slap config with a space and then the dash set mac os od policy dash binding required. And so when you put that in there that should require uh, binding to happen if it's not set up on your server by default. Okay, so just wanted to show that you can do that in uh, inside the terminal window. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and go back to our screen share and let's finish the binding process. Okay, and once I have that information in there, so I'm going to do an authenticated bind. Again, it's your directory administrator account and your password. Then I just click on OK. 
And so now it's going to get the server information. You can see it doing that right now. And it's going to start the bind process. And we should see something show up down here that's going to show us that the bind took place. So this could take a few minutes. Uh, you can see there's the change. You can see it shows a little red there. Uh, that should eventually turn to green once it's verified everything and the bind has been complete. And so we'll let that go. And there we are. You can see that we're now bound to the server. Everything's set up. If I just come in here to edit, you can see that now I'm bound to my open directory uh, server master account. I'm just going to say done, and that's going to go back up. Now, another thing that you'll notice that gets added when we do this, you can see right here, allow network users to log in at the login window. And so what that does is that allows me to use my directory uh, accounts to get into this uh, machine. If I click on options, I can limit it to only a certain number of network users or all of my network users. And I can do that right here uh, on a per machine basis. We just click on done. So that gives you an idea on how to bind uh, your clients to the server. Again, it's not too difficult of a process. Uh, you can go through and do that on all of your machines, and they will, have then, they will then have access to the directory network accounts. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.